Good morning and welcome to Freedom. We're continuing our sermon series on the healthy church. And one of the important aspects about a healthy church is that people use their gifts for the furtherance of the building of God's kingdom inside of every single person who is here today, inside of every single one. God has placed deep a gift, your skills, that God wants to see be utilized for two purposes. Let me share that with us before we get on into our message. God has given everybody gifts, skills, talents for two purposes. The first purpose is to glorify Him. And the second purpose is is to edify the body of Jesus Christ, which is the local church. And we'll talk about that a little bit more, but we want to read a scripture that probably best illustrates the purpose of when everybody is working together for the glory, the glorification, and the edification. Um, So let's take a look at Romans chapter 12. Romans chapter 12, beginning with verse 4. Just as our bodies have many parts, and each part has a special function. Now, that's important that you remember that. So it is with Christ's body. There are many parts, but each one has a different function. That's so it's the way with the local church. The church is the body of Christ. We are many parts of one body, and we all belong to to each other. Everybody say each other. Now notice notice this next verse is real important. In his grace, God has given us different gifts for doing certain things well. So if God has given you the ability to prophesy, speak out with as much faith as God has given you. If your gift is serving others, serve them well. If you are a teacher, teach well. If your gift is to encourage others, be encouraging. If it is giving, give generously. If God has given you leadership ability, take the responsibility seriously. And if you have a gift for showing kindness to others, Do it gladly. Would you bow your heads with me as we look to the Lord in prayer? Heavenly Father, we thank you for this this wonderful time to be here in your house and in your presence. And I pray that today that you allow us to get a tremendous glimpse of what it is that you intended for everyone to use the, the talents that you have given to them. Help us, God, to be submissive, to be humble, and to to find our, our proper place within the body of Christ. We submit that to you today. We want to be obedient. We ask it in Jesus' name. And God's people said, a healthy church is one where people find their proper place to use their skills to glorify God and to edify the body of Jesus Christ. So today we're going to look at three major points out of this text. Point number one, everyone has a proper place. Everyone has a proper place. I've heard people actually tell me, well, Dwayne, I, you know, I just don't think that God will use me because I'm not perfect. And I think that if God's going to use me, I have to be perfect. Just for the record, You're not going to find anybody within the scripture that God used outside of Jesus Christ himself who was perfect. He was the only perfect one. So if you're waiting until you're perfect, you're going to be waiting until you're dead. Can I get an amen? As a matter of fact, we look at some of the great people within the scripture. If If you said, who were some of the greatest people within the scripture? Some people would say, well, Moses. Moses was a great man. Did you guys know that Moses had an anger issue? Moses got so angry, could not control his anger, 
that he literally took the life of an Egyptian. And that's what caused him to, to flee. Moses got so mad when he came down out of the Mount Sinai after being 40 days and 40 nights in the very presence of a holy and righteous God. He got so mad at the people. You guys remember what he did? He broke the tablets. Moses needed anger management, didn't he? What, what about some of the other great people? How about David? David was tremendous. He was so skilled. He had so much talent in music and singing and writing songs. Yet, we all know about his adulterous affair. God can take your imperfections. God can even use your brokenness. And through and by his power, God can raise up something glorious. We have with us this morning somebody who about two years ago, he was a hardcore professed atheist. This past Thursday, this past Wednesday, thank you. This past Wednesday, he taught our men's group. It was awesome. We got so lost in the spirit. We were here till 11 o'clock at night. Is 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 awesome. I don't know if we can do that every uh, work night, but it was awesome. God has a proper place for everyone. As as proof of this, all of God's creation has a proper place. Tonight, you know what you guys need to do tonight, because tonight is going to be one of the special nights for a what they call a super moon. So you go out and you get out in your backyard. And look at the super moon. God's got so, so much of his power and such, so much of his majesty on display for all the world to see. God gave us the sun to help to grow our crops and to help us to stay warm. God gave us the moon, which causes the tide to come in. Everything has a proper balance. He gave us the trees to provide shade and to provide oxygen. A marvelous mystery of God's great balance within nature. The, the trees provide the oxygen, and we provide the trees the carbon uh, dioxide. The body. The body's got many, many marvels and mysteries about it. Probably one of them is the big toe. Probably one of the parts of our body that we don't really pay that much attention to. But our big toe helps to keep balance for the rest of the body. Everybody is important. Now, I also, as I look at nature, I look at worms and spiders. Have you ever just thought, seriously, God, what were you thinking? Eight legs? <laughs> wow. God has made his kingdom big enough for everyone. So those people who do not use their talents, those people who do not use their skill set to glorify or edify the local body, the, the local church, they do so because they do not want to do that or they're afraid of failure. And God has provided uniqueness in our gifting. God has provided a uniqueness in our gifting. Um, I was born into a family that loved music. My father played guitar, so I was around music very early on in my life. So my father, he always had a guitar in the home, and uh, so that's how I began to learn. But uh, his mother played guitar. Every single one of the individuals on my father's side of the family, they play music. And on my mother's side of the family, they um, I have an uncle who plays a harmonica and I've got cousins that play musical instruments so I'm I'm around music a whole lot another uniqueness that I have I don't know if you guys have noticed this or not but I like to talk <laughs> and uh, so when I was in middle school I won several awards in speech competition and I've got the ribbons I still have those tucked away in a photo album at the house and I enjoyed getting up and enjoyed speaking. As a matter of fact, I enjoyed speaking so much that when I announced my call to preach, my cousin said, God knew you wasn't going to shut up, so he decided to put you up. I like, I like to talk. Uh, I'm one of those people, I, I can preach a one-hour message, and it only seems like it's 15 
On the other hand, I can preach 15 minutes and you guys think that it's an hour. But God has given you uniqueness as well. And within those unique experiences, in, in those unique exposures that you've been exposed to, deep inside of you lies those talents and those skills that God wants you to use to glorify and to edify. Point number two. Five problems to avoid in finding a proper place. And these are, these are, real, these are real problems that people struggle with in being able to find a proper place. Number one, gift neglect. They know that they have a gift. They're just holding on to it. Listen to the stern warning that the Apostle Paul writes to young Timothy. 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse uh, 1 Timothy ch chapter 4, verse 14. Do not neglect the spiritual gift you received. If anyone here this morning fully understands and comprehends that God has given you a spiritual gift and you're not using it, it's more than just hurting yourself. You're hurting your local body. You're hurting your local church as well. And so that's gift neglect. So don't, don't neglect the gift that is in you. God has given that to you for a purpose. Number two is gift misplacement. 1 Corinthians chapter 12, starting with verse 14. Yes, the body has many different parts, not just one part. If the foot says, I am not a part of the body... Because I'm not a hand, that does not make it any less a part of the body. And if the ear says, I am not a part of the body because I am not the eye, would that make it any less a part of the body? If the whole body were an eye, how would you hear? Or if your whole body were an ear, how would you smell anything? So our bodies have many parts through the uniqueness of of our gifts, but it benefits the rest of the body. There's gift misplacement. For example, I think I'm fairly decent with playing music. I can catch certain parts of harmony. I can sing. I love to speak. Um, I, I'm a great organizer. But you guys would not want me to cook. Because I would be sending up burnt offerings. Can I get an amen? <laughs> Cooking is not, not my gifting. That's, that's, so if you guys want me to make cookies, they would probably be more like hockey pucks rather than, than cookies. Um, so, you know, th th there are people who say, hey, you know, God's calling me to sing. And if they can't carry a tune in the bucket, even if you gave them the bucket, God's not calling that person to sing. Um, so don't get confused with your eagerness with your actual true gifts. There are, there are times where you may be eager and you've got a burning, heartfelt desire to do something, but down deep inside you know that you're not really super gifted at that. Um, you may want to, but you know your skills are not there. That, my friends, is gift misplacement. The third one is gift envy. Galatians chapter 5, verse 26, we become so consumed with the gifting of somebody else because they can do a job and they can do it well. And instead of thanking God for that unique ability for them to do this special tasking, we get envious of that. Listen to what the Bible says in Galatians chapter 5, verse 26. Let us not become conceited or provoke one another or be jealous of one another. Can I just say this, and you guys know it's true? Did, did you know that there are churches who split? Not because of doctrinal differences or not because of any other issue except of jealousy over somebody else's gifting. Sounds pretty ridiculous, doesn't it? We should be able to rejoice in the fact that people are uniquely gifted. Last week, we had a 13-year-old who played the guitar. 
He was pretty impressive. And he's only 13. And you know what? God's only going to help him to get better because he, he's got this hunger down deep inside that he wants to learn more. And at 13, he's just like this sponge, and he wants to learn more. Instead of being envious of him, we're like, wow, we can use him here at Freedom Church. The kingdom of God can use that, that kind of talent to build and to, uh, to help focus people on the cross of Jesus Christ. Number four is gift worship. You like your gift so much that you're, you're just in love with your own spiritual gift. You're worshiping the gift instead of worshiping the giver. Jesus mentions this when he talks, when he is relating to the Pharisees. And this was a particular big issue for them because he says uh, Jesus made mention that they love to stand in the marketplace to be seen of people. That's gift worship. And they love to make prayer. Not only love to make prayer, but they love to make long prayers so that they would impress people. They knew the right words. They knew uh, hard and complicated words that they probably used as if they were trying to impress God. But in reality, they, they wanted to knock the socks off of someone else to impress them. That, my friends, is gift worship, where they're so focused in on the worship of their gift that they're not willing to use that for those two main purposes, which is, you guys help me say it, it's to glorify and edify. It's not to glorify ourself. And that is gift worship. And then the fifth one, the fifth problem is gift shut out. You have a gift, and you know that you're talented. You know that God has given you this gift. You want to use it for those two purposes, to glorify and to edify. And you, you want to be able to find this proper place, but no matter how hard and no matter how desperate that you try to seek a place to fit in, within another local church. You cannot find that because somebody has attended a church that does not allow for the exercise of that gift. And that, that's sad. That's, those are real problems. Those are real issues. But that's not going to be the problem here at Freedom Church. We're going to allow people to exercise their full right to use their God given skills and talents. I'm very passionate about this because I know that sometimes while you're lying there in bed and God puts a dream in your head, don't let your dreams die. Don't let those visions fade away. But bring those to us here at Freedom Church let us breathe life into those. Let us be concerned about ministry that reaches outside of these four walls so that we can show the love of Jesus Christ. We can show that Jesus Christ is compassionate, that he cares for all these other people who are around here. And that gift shut out is not going to be an issue here. I feel very passionate about that. We're going to make that happen here at Freedom Church. Everybody has a place. But I want you to pay close attention to point number three. And that's the seriousness of not using your gift. I don't want you using your gift because I said so. I want you using your gift because of the scripture we're getting ready to use. And we've already looked in Romans where it says you have already received a gift. You, you everybody here this morning... You have already received a gift for those two purposes. To glorify our Heavenly Father and to edify the local New Testament church. But I want you to listen to the seriousness of not using your gift. Matthew chapter 25 starting with verse 24. Then the servant with the one bag of silver came and said, Master, I knew you were a harsh man, harvesting crops you didn't plant, and gathering crops you didn't cultivate. I was afraid I would lose your money 
So I hid it in the earth. Look, here is your money bag. Here's your money back. Now, on the surface, it sounds like this guy was totally afraid to risk. It don't, from the surface, it sounds like this guy almost has a legitimate reason why that he didn't go out and try to do anything with what he'd been given. But I want everybody paying very close attention to these next few words. But the master replied, you wicked and lazy servant. Well, that, that would really sting. <laughs> wicked and lazy. If you knew I'd harvest crops I didn't plant, but gathered crops I didn't cultivate, why didn't you deposit my money in the bank? At least I could have gotten some interest on it. This scripture carries a lot of gravity because all of Matthew chapter 25 is basically talking about being good stewards of what God has already entrusted you with. And so this morning I want to share I want to share six thoughts from out of this passage. And what we're going to do this morning is each and every single person should have a skill sheet. If you, if you do not have a skill sheet um, before that we get all of them filled out, we'll make sure that you have. I have one. We've got some extra ones here. But everybody here this morning fills out a skill sheet. I feel that important. And I think that this, this message today will be a making point for, for this church as we close out 2014 as we look into the future for 2015, we need your talents. We need your skills. There are six things that we can observe out of this text. The first thing that we observe is Jesus has endowed everyone with gifting. These individuals within this text are called servants. So the issue is we have to be able to find places for service. That's why the title of today's message is called Finding. We need to find our service, our area, our arena of service. Jesus has endowed everyone with gifting. Everybody here this morning, Jesus has already put something inside of you. And we want it to come out. And be used at Freedom Church. Secondly, Jesus has provided these gifts to build his kingdom, not yours. Because when it's all said and done, at the end of the day, there's only going to be one kingdom that stands. There's only one name that throughout the pages of history is going to mean anything. Matter of fact, if I was to ask the majority of the people three years ago who won the Super Bowl, you'd have to think. You wouldn't be able to, you wouldn't be able to, to comprehend it. Or you wouldn't be able to, to know it off the top of your head. If I said 10 or 12 years ago, who won the World Series? It's a major event. But you wouldn't be able to tell me. <laughs> well, the majority of them wouldn't be able to tell you. And in your kingdom, the kingdom that you try to build, the, the money that you try to earn, all the awards and the accolades that you try to win for yourself, when it's all said and done, 20 years after you're dead and gone, either they'll sell it as artifacts, your family will take it, put it up in the attic, put it down in the basement, put it somewhere, and in 50 years, you'd be hard-pressed if anybody remembered your name. Because you know why? Because your kingdom's not everlasting. Your kingdom is not Alpha and Omega. But His is. That's why Jesus has provided these gifts for you in this place, in this time, in this generation, to help build His kingdom. The third area that we observe is that Jesus expects us to give out of these gifts. 
Not only has he endowed everyone with gifts, he has provided these gifts to build his kingdom, but Jesus expects us to give out of our gifts. He does not want us to hold on to them. There are people who love to sing. And they can sing at home, but they don't, want, they don't want to sing in front of other people. There are people who are so gifted and so talented, but they hold on to those talents and those skills. There are people who are awesome, great mechanics. They just don't want to do it for the church. Jesus expects us to give out of our gifts. The fourth observation we can make is the more that we give, something miraculous takes place, the more that we gain. The more that we are willing to give of ourselves, the more that we will gain. The more that you use your talent, the better, the stronger, the more vibrant and the more healthy that that talent that you have, the more that that becomes. The less that you use it, the more rusty, the less pop that it has. It's just like your muscles. The more that you use your muscles, the more quick and agile that they become, the less that you use them. It's, hard, it's harder to get out of bed. It's harder to move. You've lost some range of motion. There's the biblical truth that is taught that the more that we give, the more that we receive. The fifth one. Jesus will hold us accountable. There is coming a day where everyone who has ever confessed Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, they will stand before Him. This is not the great, great white throne judgment, but this is the judgment of the Christians to say, what did you do with what I've given you? This is called stewardship. We literally stand before our Maker and say, I gave you these talents, I gave you these skills, I gave you this gifting. What did you do to either help build my kingdom or to edify? Let, let, let me just read some of these that are back in the, that scripture again. If your gift is serving others, serve them well. You, got, you guys catch that? See, a lot of people, a lot of people have this huge misconception that the only gifts within the church are either singing or Preaching and teaching. Here it says serving. We need people who are willing to serve. What about this one? If your gift is to encourage. Everybody smile right now. That's pretty weak, but I'll, I'll take it. I don't think there would be a whole lot of encouragement with some of those smiles. But some people, you might not be able to sing. You might, you might not be able to do some cleaning. But man, you've got a lot of encouragement. You're, you're hopeful. You're the kind of person that no matter what happens, you can provide some encouragement. What about this one? If you have the gift of showing kindness, then do it get gladly. Because Jesus is going to hold us accountable for using what he has given to us. He's given it to us for those reasons. And then sixthly, Jesus accepts no excuses. Hold nothing back. As of today, I want everybody to know, as of today, we are opening up pathways. We are opening up doors as of today here at Freedom Church. There's no more excuses for you. I don't want people, as, as senior pastor of this church, there is no more sitting in the chairs. Christianity is not a spectator sport. Can I get an amen? amen? And so today, Rachel's going to come and she's going to provide an invitation. Because we don't know what's on your heart. Maybe, maybe there's a, another issue outside of your gifting. Maybe, maybe you're going with a, a struggle. Rachel's going to sing a song of invitation. And then I want everyone to remain right where they're at. And then we're going to go over these, these skill sheets. But everybody stand here this morning as we prepare for prayer.